In today's tutorial, we'll discuss about the blood-brain barrier. And uh, we'll start our discussion from the introduction of the blood-brain barrier. After that, we will tell you people about the composition or the components that will actually make our blood-brain barrier and the functions of this blood-brain barrier. After that, we'll tell you people about the substances that can cross the blood-brain barrier. In here, we'll be discussing about the areas of the brain that lake the blood-brain barrier. And uh, here, we will tell you people about the factors that are going to damage the blood-brain barrier. So let's start from the very first point, introduction of the blood-brain barrier. Just concentrate the words blood-brain barrier. Barrier is actually uh, obstacle. Consider it as obstacle. So if the obstacle is present between the brain and the blood, then that is actually known as the blood-brain barrier. Consider here an obstacle between uh, the blood. So blood is here in the blood vessel. So obstacle between the blood and the brain is actually known as blood brain barrier. Now what is this barrier for? This barrier is for selectively allowing the things to move from the blood towards the brain. Simple. And we will discuss about the functions here at this point. Now let's come towards the composition or the components that are going to actually make our this blood brain barrier. Consider this as a blood vessel, capillaries, and the blood is present in this side and we do have some other uh, substances present here. So if they want to move from the blood vessels, from the capillaries towards the brain, tissues or brain cells. So here we have obstacle for that. Now is the barrier, the blood brain barrier. Now what is this barrier composed of? Let's discuss that. So first of all, we have the P-glycoprotein. Function of the P-glycoprotein is very simple and easy to understand. Now this is actually a protein which is using the energy ATP. Do, through which it is actually pumping out the already moved in uh, toxins okay so are the drugs that are moved in so these are actually moving pumping those drugs or those toxins back out towards the blood so this it is forming the kind of a barrier now the next one is known is the tight junctions uh, also known as zona occluded the occluded protein which is a complex protein structure it is going to actually block somehow the pathway between the uh, endothelium so like this what will happen further there will be a kind of uh, hindrance a kind of barrier uh, will be created by these tight junctions or occluding proteins for the substances to move from the blood towards the brain tissues or cells the next one we have is the pericyte now these pericytes are supposed to cover the blood capillaries and by means of these pericytes the contraction and dilation of the uh, capillaries is actually controlled and the next one we have is the astrocytes now these astrocytes star shaped astrocytes in feet that are again going to cover your these capillaries and they also have a tight junction between the astrocytes there is a kind of tight junction now this is the second tight junction the first one was in the endothelium and the second one is in between the astrocytes and this is again a kind of uh, uh, providing a close packing for the substances to move from the blood towards the brain so these all the astrocytes the tight junctions of the astrocytes the pericytes the tight junctions the tight junctions the p glycoproteins these all combine together they actually make the blood brain barrier now what is the function of these blood brain barrier we discussed in short there now let's elaborate it a little bit more so this is actually regulating the influx and efflux of the nutrients ions minerals etc and uh, the very interesting thing is that this blood brain barrier is actually limiting the bacteria and toxins so in short we can say that it is the limiting the movement of the bacteria and toxins towards the brain tissues or brain cells now let's come towards the substances that can cross the blood brain barrier the gases like oxygen carbon dioxide gas electrolytes the amino acids, glucose and the drugs having the size of the 500 datons or you can say 800 atomic mass unit, they can uh, cross the blood brain barrier. And one another important point is that the lipophilic drugs can cross the blood brain barrier and again the small size drug can cross easily and if the size of the drug increase or if the drug is polar then it is difficult for those drugs to cross the blood brain barrier uh, now let's come towards the next point the areas of the brain that lake the blood brain barrier we do have certain areas where there is no blood brain barrier now what are those areas in one sentence if i tell that the areas are the circumventricular organs now what do we mean by the circumventricular organs 
the organs are located around the ventricles you know in the brain we have four ventricles the lateral ventricle the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle uh, if you guys are feeling confusion we do have uh, uh, a lecture on the brain you can watch it well come to the point the areas that leak the blood brain barrier are the pineal gland the median eminence of hypothalamus the posterior pituitary the area for strema these are some of the areas that leak the blood brain barrier now here we have another point that is uh, what can damage the blood brain barrier remember the blood pressure injury trauma ischemia radiations inflammation and some other factors might also damage your blood brain barrier so this is in short about the blood brain barrier i hope you got if still you have any kind of question please feel free to ask us in the comment box and don't forget inviting your friends to our channel to our page thank you for watching the dr uut lectures